Yeah. So myokines, the science behind myokines is relatively new. I would say it's been for the last 23 years. There's hundreds of different myokines. I think that they've categorized around 60. Uh, the most famous is interleukin-6 and interleukin-6, which we are very familiar with when it is released from macrophages in what we would consider a cytokine storm. The skeletal muscle releases interleukin-6 depending on the duration and intensity of training. And it releases myokines, but the interleukin-6 has a different effect on the body, a different effect than the myokines that are released from macrophages. It dampens the immune system. It um, creates somewhat of an anti-inflammatory counterbalancing impact, which is incredible to think that one of the reasons why a sedentary lifestyle may be so dangerous is not just the health of skeletal muscle, because it's that decreased glycogen flux that can create a lot of uh, reactive oxygen species and intramyocellular lipids. You have to train the tissue to generate that flux. But the other underappreciated aspect of skeletal muscle is that contracting component, that contractile component that releases these myokines. When you do not release these myokines, then you do not impact the immune system in the same way. It also has a, a, an effect on lipolysis. It also has an effect on glucose regulation, not just the contracting skeletal muscle utilizing um, energy and ATP, mitochondria, but again, just the um, actual homeostatic mechanism. And that's just one myokine. There's also BDNF, which we've heard of, capsets, capsets and B. There's uh, uh, just a whole host. There's a myokine that can affect tumor regulation decorin. All kinds of things released from the muscle. Are, is it known? I suppose it might be a different threshold for different myokines, but when I don't move enough, if I'm traveling and I'm sitting on a plane, I recently went to Australia. It's a 15 hour flight. I can just feel that my brain is not as healthy and I, my outlook on the world is not as good, presumably related to BDNF or other neurologic mediators for my brain. And I imagine that was related to just this, this dearth of myokines because I just wasn't moving because I was so sick. So is it known how much we need to move to get these myokines to be stimulated? What we can do is that we can focus on muscle health. If you target muscle health, then the subsequent release of the myokines, one could conclude would be adequate. And it doesn't take much to maintain skeletal muscle health. I mean, some of the earlier studies that I worked on out of Lehman's lab they were doing 30 minutes of walking five days a week and two days a week of some kind of yoga uh, as resistance training. And that was very minimal. And that was enough to maintain lean body composition. My guess is that will probably be the minimum effective dose. And again, there's a whole bunch, there's a whole body of literature looking at the different myokines, but we're not in a place yet where we can measure them because it, it's just so volatile. Interleukin-6 is very, could you measure it? You can absolutely measure it, but it is volatile. 